Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good evening from wherever you're watching us from. Thank you for joining us again this Sabbath to just study the Word of God. We are still doing our lesson, uh, the Three Angels Messages, and we are doing lesson 11 today. But before we go any further, I'd ask that our sister Jess to please pray for us. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful to have an opportunity to study your word. We come before you praying that, Lord, your Holy Spirit, who is able to lead us into all truth, will guide us today. I pray that our minds will be opened that, O oh God, we shall be able to discern that which can only be spiritually discerned, that we may understand your word and find courage to face these last days. May those who are studying with us um, have focus as we study, and may there be less distractions even as they are watching us from home. It is our prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. So I'll just ask us to say hi to the viewer. Uh, uh, good morning, dear viewer. My name is Onsongo Rafael Yamiso. I welcome you to this wonderful discussion. Karibu sana, Rafael. Thank you. My name is uh, Jafet Rono. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Jafet. Praise God. My Amen. name is Jess Rono. I am blessed to be here. Karibu sana. Thank you. So I'm Rumona Apio. Um, we'll be going through this study, the seal of God and mark of the beast. So this study is in two cha in two parts. So today we'll do part one, and next Sabbath we'll do part two. So our memory text comes from the book of Revelation, chapter seven, verse two, and all the way to verse three. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth this and the sea saying do not harm the earth the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god on their foreheads beloved we are still studying the end time events and at this point we are looking at the seal of god and mark of the beast so th through this study, we are going to understand what is the seal of God and what is the mark of the beast and who are going to get the seal of God and who are going to do what? Get the mark of the beast. So it is a study that we have been understanding as a great controversy between God and Satan, right? And just... It is not just about who is on whose side, but it is about loyalty, it is about authority, and it is about worship. These prophecies are in the book of Revelation chapter 13, the little horn in Daniel chapter 7, the son of perdition as in the book of Second Thessalonians verse 2. They all talk about God's authority, commands of loyalty, and it also introduces to us to counterfeit worship. So today's study as we are going to go through as per days from Sunday all the way to Friday, we are going to see all that entails the seal of God and the mark of the beast. This is what I'll call the introduction part. So you have to be very keen so that you don't lose us. <laughs> and then so next, when we just now do the conclusion, we understand and maybe just have a self-reflection and understand uh, what is really the seal of God and what the mark of the beast is. <clears throat> so Jess, we're going to go through Sunday, steadfast endurance. Steadfast endurance. I'm like, how can endurance be steadfast? You know, you can get tired. Please talk up to us about that. Yeah, um, it, it's it's interesting. The the word that is actually used that mm. has to be steadfast mm. means that these are these are continu these these it's it's continuous. You're it's, just there. Uh, you you're just there, and it means for for, for you to be steadfast, it, it it does have an implication as though mm. it is going to actually take a while mm. and therefore there is patience required. Uh, yes. We went through the study of the first angel's message, the second angel's message mm. and the third angel's message. In mm. the first angel's message, God calling us to worship only Him. him. Mm -hmm. And then and, 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 and with that it means that there's allegiance, as you mentioned, and there's loyalty that mm. is only owed to God mm. and God alone mm. as the creator of the heaven and earth. Mm. And then in 
um, in the second angel's message, um, it's as though God gives us a divisive message. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember the words of Christ when he says that I have not come to bring peace, but a sword, because mm -hmm. it's going to separate you. Mm -hmm. The second angel's message calls us to become separate. Mm -hmm. He, God literally calling us out of the world. Mm -hmm. And in that separation, then God starts um, doing a work of, of saving and harvesting and putting aside his true church. Mm -hmm. And in the third angel's message, after he's done the work of separation, he says, now people ought to choose. Those who will worship me, who mm -hmm. have separated from this, will receive the seal of God. Mm -hmm. But those who do not worship me will receive the mark of the beast and therefore will receive the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we continue on in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, God then gives us the characteristic mm -hmm. of the people who will have ended up separating themselves mm -hmm. from the mainstream um, churches, from the world, from the, from the worldliness that you are seeing today, from the wickedness that you are seeing today, choosing to worship and honor God, Amen. choosing to separate themselves from family, from friends, from 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 workplaces, from jobs that keep you mm. from being loyal mm. to God. Mm. And it says this, that here is the patience of the saints. In Amen. the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 12, mm. these are they who keep two characteristics. Those who keep the commandments of God, mm -hmm. they obeyed God first when God called them to, to worship him. Then they obeyed God when God says, come out. Those who keep those commandments including the sabbath commandment mm -hmm. the fourth one mm -hmm. and the second characteristic and those who have the faith of jesus amen even amen. if you just think of these three angels messages mm -hmm. first when the second angels message is goes out mm -hmm. there is a lot of separation that has to go through and therefore, it means that there's conflict that already begins within the heart of the individual in my normal, all, my own life experience. Mm -hmm. Brothers will have to be separated. Why? Because you'll say, you know, I can no longer uh, accompany you to the club or to the bar. Mm -hmm. I have to separate from you. Yeah, uh, yeah. You will have to tell your boss, I can no longer come to church on Saturday. On Saturday. I, 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 to work on Saturday, mm -hmm. I have to go and worship my God. It mm -hmm. is a divisive message. It mm -hmm. is a message that's going to be tearing apart the normal thing that we are used to and therefore it means that the people who choose to hearken to this message will have to endure will have to be patient as they wait for god to give them their true reward yes. in the book of um, acts chapter 14 verse 22 paul speaking to um acts chapter 14 verse 22 acts chapter 14 verse 22 um exhorting um, these people in Antioch. He says, we are, we are just given about their ministry, and then we are told that confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, to continue in the faith, and then reminding them that, why? And that we must through much tribulation, tribulation. Mm. enter into the kingdom of God. That mm. it is not going to be easy before we enter that mm. kingdom mm. of God. Mm. It is a narrow path. And mm. as we go through that narrow path, mm. there will be robbers on that narrow path. Yes. On the highway to heaven, mm. there's going to be struggles. Mm. On the highway to heaven, there's going to be separation. Mm. On the highway to heaven, there's going to be trials. There's going to be floods that will arise and almost want to open overpower us mm -hmm. and we are going to be tried until we shall enter that kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. and that's why we are mm -hmm. told that the, the saints who eventually enter will have manifested great patience mm -hmm. they will have been faithful in very little things that god called them Amen. to you know Amen. very small things mm -hmm. and patiently waiting for the reward that only heaven can give mm -hmm. that this world will not give mm -hmm. they will honor god by keeping every commandment but patiently wait on god to eventually reward them mm. and that's why it is steadfast endurance endure to the end endure to the end and therein you shall overcome mm. and obtain the crown amen. amen you know when you're talking i'm just i'm just looking at it like a revolution you're talking about separation you know i'm no longer going to we can't be friends or this is the life i have mm. chosen for myself so you choose, are you going to be my friend or mm. not? Because for me, this is what I have chosen. This is, this is the way I'm going to follow. And 
you can imagine doing that to family, doing that to friends, to mm. colleagues. And sometimes it's your friends of 20 years, your childhood friend, and you are telling them, you know what, this is how mm. I have decided to be living my life, to follow Jesus and not turning back. And then you are talking about uh, steadfast endurance, and it's in the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, where we are told that it is the patience of the saints, mm. those that will endure to the end. Mm. And it's something that just comes out and tells me, you know what? the trials you are having right now you have to endure them mm. steadfastly mm. not giving up so um Japheth, uh, just has just come mentioned something that has really um is really important in the christian life faithfulness in small things how can a christian understand like just help us understand as christians the impact of being faithful in small things and how it is related eventually because what Jess is talking about, steadfast endurance, is not the small small trials that we have. It will be bigger trials. So just help us understand the smaller things and the big trials. Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, I would like us to read from the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 26 until 28. It is a parable that I really like. It's a very simple parable. Christ is drawing from an experience that very many of the Palestinians at that time would have known, many, many of the Jews at that time would have known, um, the parable of the sower uh, and, uh, who has uh, sown some seed and then walked away. And then Christ said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth the sickle because the harvest is come. And Christ is describing the, 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 the character of Christianity and how Christianity manifests in the life. And it begins in small things. It begins slowly and then all of a sudden it grows up into a full plant. That is how all characters develop, that both for good or for ill. And that is how the Christian experience is, is, is developed, both for good or for ill, in very, very tiny and very, very small things. And over time, what happens is the Christian develops positively or negatively in all the small challenges that God gives us. So that your experience grows first the blade, then the ear, afterwards the full corn, the ear. Very many times we have um, challenges and difficulties that arise. The challenges that you talked about, uh, just the challenges that you talked about, Ramona, um, the challenges, let's say, you go to a place and then uh, there is a very strong pressure. It is not to death. It's not that you will die if you don't succumb. But there is just strong pressure, peer pressure, to do something that you know is wrong. It's a small thing. In that small thing, you make a small decision for or against what is right. And then over time, you are establishing a habit. And uh, I remember this, uh, sm this dictum that um, uh, uh, I had when I was uh, well, much younger. It says that many a times your thoughts become actions. And then your actions combined over time form habits. And then many habits form what? A lifestyle. And that lifestyle determines your destiny. And it, begin, it begins with these thoughts and actions, little by little. And so I think we should be very careful about um, the small challenges God brings to us and how God can enable us to, to gain the victory in these small challenges, which are a preparation for the bigger challenges. It's like having small cuts, you know, small exams, preparation for the large exam in the future. Those challenges were just like um, you are moving from grade one to grade two to grade three. And uh, the success of grade three depends actually on success of grade one. So if you are able to, success in, to succeed in grade one, you will pass even in grade two true, true. and grade three. It's just like that. And it, there is no like, um, there is no two ways about it. Um, Steadfast endurance is really us. Will we remain faithful mm. to the end? Mm. If we can remain faithful in the small things, then it means we'll be able to remain faithful in the big things. Mm. 
So now we move to the Monday part, the cosmic struggle. And the cosmic struggle is really just interesting because it takes us back to the cross where everything just came to a standstill. And Jesus is here calling his father and telling him, why have you forsaken me? You know, this is Jesus. And, you know, they even mocked him and asked him, you're the one who used to save people. Why don't you do what? Save yourself. And that's the same mocking that came even in John chapter 11 when Lazarus had died. And some people were asking, uh, he was, he, he, if he really loved him this much, why didn't he come to save him before he did what? He died. But the death of Lazarus was for something bigger, for, a, for the glory of God. And this is the same thing. The, cross, the, the death of Christ on the cross was for something bigger, for the glory of God. And I'll just like to ask you, Zafeth, to take us through the cosmic struggle, just the hanging on the cross and every other detail that you really deem, as, deem important for us to understand in this study. Uh, thank you so much. Mm. So uh, uh, if we consider the cosmic struggle, we are considering what happened to Christ at the cross. And what happened to Christ at the cross is, is actually monumental. Mm. You know, uh, uh, if you think about who Christ is, as he's described in the book of John chapter 1, he's described as 100% fully God. John chapter 1, we are told, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, mm. and the Word was mm. God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And so this is, and, and in verse 14 we are told that uh, the word was made flesh. Mm. So this is speaking of Jesus Christ, mm. who is 100% fully divine. Mm -hmm. But then throughout his life, mm. you actually find that Christ took upon himself entirely our nature. In the book of Hebrews, um, uh, reading in chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 14 onwards. We are told, seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Why? Verse 15 tells us, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, mm -hmm. but was in all points tempted like as we mm -hmm. are, yet mm -hmm. without sin. Mm -hmm. And so Christ fully and entirely and completely took mm -hmm. upon himself mm -hmm. our nature. Mm -hmm. And that is best described in that conflict that we find Christ had at the cross. Mm -hmm. At the cross, Christ had a conflict that was nothing like any other conflict he ever had. Mm -hmm. We know, first of all, in Gethsemane, mm -hmm. when he was crying and he was um, awaiting um, the struggle that would, um, he would endure in, in the cross, the physical struggle, mm -hmm. and the struggle even of having the sins of the world born upon him. We know that he, 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 he had so much upon him until he had great drops of of sweat of that were coming off of his of his forehead. Mm. I would like us to read that in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26 um, of what Christ actually endured um, when he was right there. We are told Matthew 26 um, reading from verse um, 38. It says my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Mm. Uh, tarry here and watch with him. Mm. What, what do you mean? And then when uh, this is Christ speaking to his disciples, mm. and then when he speaks to his father, he says uh, in verse 39, and he went a little further, Jesus, while he was in the garden, and he fell on his face and he, say, he prayed saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will uh, 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 but as you will, uh, 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 as you will be done. And he did this three times until we are told great drops of sweat um, came off his, his, his forehead. So Christ was in, was in an extreme state of anguish, mm. an extreme state of mm. sorrow. Mm. Uh, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was meeting something that was very much contrary to human nature, a level of suffering that you and I could not possibly conceive. Mm -hmm. And it's not merely physical suffering. It is, it is the weight of sin that was beginning to be placed upon him. And he mm. was beginning to drink of this cup. That's why he was saying, this cup, I don't want to drink this mm -hmm. cup. The cup, the sin of the whole world, I can't have it. Mm. But eventually he accepted. Mm. And right there you find something that is key to that statement, the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because we are discussing the cosmic struggle. Mm. Right there, the faith of Jesus. That statement is found in Revelation chapter 14. Mm -hmm. You find it right there. The faith that Christ had was this type of faith. Where he 
was so against a particular thing. Mm. His human nature so recoiled to do a particular thing, which in this case was moving forward to the cross. Mm. It, he was so against it. But in the end, what happened? In the end, he said, let your will be done. Mm-hmm. That is the faith that Christ, uh, that, 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 that God wants us to have. Mm. And then what happened at the cross? Mm. This is now uh, uh, after Christ has accepted fully uh, 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 the weight of of um, of, um, uh, 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 of, of the world's sins. Mm-hmm. Matthew 27, reading from verse 45 until verse 50. It says, now at the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And then verse 46, we are told Christ uh, uh, cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which uh, uh, is translated, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm-hmm. This is Christ's human nature. Just he is feeling in a real sense what is happening because now he has taken upon himself fully the sin of the world. And so in, uh, it's, it's, it's like he cannot sense the presence of uh, 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 of the father and then later on in uh, uh, in verse 50 he say he cries out with a loud voice and then yields up his ghost that means that he was faithful until the very very point of death Mm -hmm. that is uh, 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 they could say the peak of the cosmic struggle Mm -hmm. the peak of the experience that christ had Mm -hmm. that he struggled all the way to the point of death and that's actually what paul tells us you know because paul is a Constantly throughout his text, he constantly asks Christians, asks believers, look upon Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. as your ultimate Mm -hmm. pattern. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, when Paul is talking about the various struggles that many Christians go through, we are told, um, Hebrews 12, reading from verse 1, it says, Seeing that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. This happens to all of us. Mm-hmm. We are compassed. We are surrounded by witnesses. Everyone is watching, especially as a Christian. People are watching uh, your, your, your actions. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Let us run with patience. With patience. The same patience we find in Re- Revelation 14 mm-hmm. verse 12. Mm-hmm. The race that is set before us. And looking unto Jesus, Amen. the author and finisher mm-hmm. of our faith, mm-hmm. who, because of the joy set before him, endured the cross and despised that. It was very shameful. You know, people forget that crucifixion was the most shameful form mm-hmm. of, of death, death conceivable at that particular mm-hmm. time. Beyond evil, even physical suffering, there was mental anguish. Mm-hmm. The fact that he was stripped, you know, um, normally there are pictures of mm-hmm. Jesus Christ depicted on the cross. Mm-hmm. Normally they clothe him because, you know, it is decency. Mm-hmm. We're trying to, but he was naked upon the cross. Mm-hmm. It was ultimate shame, mm-hmm. ultimate suffering. And uh, uh, it says he endured the cross and he despised the shame and now he is set down on the right hand of the father consider him verse 3 that endured such a contradiction of sinners against him lest you be wearied in your minds and faint and you have faint. not resisted until what until blood striving against sin mm. the ultimate of the cosmic con- con- struggle is to struggle until the point of blood until mm-hmm. the point of death this is something that christ did christ set a pattern for us mm. we are told revelation 14 verse 12 the saints at the end will have the faith of jesus mm. will have the faith that jesus had mm. how was christ's faith mm. he was faithful until death god mm. calls us to have such a faith amen uh, the verse that you've read, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, all the way to verse 3, verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus. The author, there are the, the versions that says the author and finisher of our faith. My version says the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. Amen. You Perfect. know, um, I usually just look at this verse differently, but through this study of the cosmic struggle, like when we read about the cross of Jesus, of him at the cross in Matthew chapter 27, then that is where our faith should begin and end. Amen. And at this point, I just ask um, Raphael, you know, it is in this panel that you once told us that the Father and the Son had a holy meeting. I've never forgotten those words. <laughs> But here we are seeing a different Jesus. They had a holy meeting and agreed that, you know what? I'll go and die for these people. But here we are told in the book of Matthew chapter 27, he's saying that if it is your will, please 
let this cup, take this cup away from me. And he's even asking the father, why has thou forsaken me? And I'm just trying, someone is wondering, maybe, I'm also wondering, was this Jesus uh, going to, to what, what, why, what do these words mean? Do they mean that Jesus at some point felt like, no, you know, I, yes, I know we had that meeting, but apparently I can't do this again. Why? Or, or what, what is you are saying those words? in that part mm-hmm. i think um i think it, it simply shows us the humanity of christ mm. and uh, it's something I, I identify with for many of us sometimes perhaps we started on a course mm. it could be even uh, you decided to go back to school <laughs> but then uh somewhere along the way you mm. ask yourself hey is this why? Worth it? Who, who, who? <laughs> it's like the person who 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 i was at the beginning when is i was making this decision same. and the person who is experiencing this school mm. is totally different and mm. you and you feel like you sh- you should quit but you stay the course and you mm. finish and so i would liken it to uh, the human condition mm. the human condition mm. many have uh, have have smiled on their wedding day mm. but a few years later they uh, they give uh, <laughs> a negative testimony. <laughs> it's like it's not the same person mm. who was saying I do. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, it's just human nature. But mm. we see Christ persevering and, 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 and going and, and, and pushing, pushing on and, mm. and ultimately mm. uh, keeping his word mm. and securing our salvation. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Just what do you have to say about that? Uh, I, I think um, it's, if you look at the words of Christ, mm. my God, my God, why has thou forsaken? Mm-hmm. Taken from the book of Revel- I mean, Psalms 22. Mm. And I think that's where I would want to read from. Mm. If you look at the whole verse and what Christ was resting upon, if, if on, honestly these were the full words of what, what he uttered to the Father. He, the, the Bible says in 22 verse 1, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. And then look at verse 3. This is just very comforting. Mm-hmm. He says, but mm-hmm. I know your character. Amen. Literally, that's what he's saying. He says, mm-hmm. but I know who you are. Mm-hmm. I know you are a holy God. Mm-hmm. You inhabit the praises of his right. Amen. Then he says, our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you and you delivered them. Mm-hmm. So Christ rests his assurance even mm-hmm. during that moment of trial mm-hmm. in the character of his father. Amen. He has faith in his father. Mm-hmm. He, he knows who his father Amen. is. He knows, Amen. despite mm-hmm. my struggle, I know my God. Mm. I know the one whom I have believed in. I know the right. one whom I have trusted mm. from when I was a young boy. Mm-hmm. I know the one I cried to. I know the one who formed me in my mother's mm-hmm. womb and brought me and gave me a body that I may, I, I, I may occupy while I'm here on earth. And that is what Revelation chapter 14, 12 is telling us. They have the, the faith of Jesus, the kind of faith that Christ manifested. And it was the faith where he, he knew the child seems too great to, to, for me to bear. Mm-hmm. But I know the character Amen. of my God. He Amen. will deliver me. Amen. I know the character of my God and therefore I will rest in his will. And that's why he was confident to say, mm. I really don't want to drink of this cup, God. But let your will be done. Mm. Why? Mm. I trust in your character. Mm. And, and, and that is the call for each Christian today. Amen. Start having Get acquainted with God. Mm. Get to know him. That is what will take you through the trials of today and the trials of tomorrow. And especially the trials that are about to beset the Christians in these last days. When that trial shall come and heaven seems silent. Because heaven seems silent for Christ Mm. at this time. It seems as though God had left. Mm. The people who will be left in those last days, heaven will seem very silent for them. And it is in them trusting that their God has forgiven them because he is merciful. It is in them trusting that God will deliver them. That even though they are beset with trials and Mm. temptations, they know, no, 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 no. Even if the devil whispers a thought in my ear that I am forsaken, I am not forsaken. I know my God. And, And that's the faith of Jesus, the faith he expressed Amen. in the character Amen. of his father. Amen. Amen. Dear viewer, I don't know if your life is crumbling right now. I've had a week where I've really just, uh, I felt like there's a lot of darkness around me. I don't know if it is the same for you. I don't know 
how you got by because for me it was just reminding Christ you know what I'm I am your child if you leave me there is no one else who who will help me that's how I got by I don't know how you're getting by I don't know what lessons you learned for me is what um just is saying because yesterday evening i was actually just reading the book of psalms chapter 22 and um, i was like as she's reading it i'm like okay okay this is really really holy spirit is fine i don't know how you're getting by i don't know what lessons you're learning from the experience you're passing through i don't know what your experience could help others how, how how could you share your experience with others and how could it help others in their struggle or in their faith i don't know if you know someone who's going through a hard time and how could you just encourage them because in these times in these hard times that we are talking about that are coming to a, we are going or they are coming towards us either way we'll need the encouragement of each other and as just says is if you don't have a relationship with god if you are not acquainted with god it will be very hard for you to get by because how would you be able to say that god is faithful and you've not experienced his faithfulness yeah i think that's how i just finish the monday part and Amen. move to the ungodly chain tuesday rafael All talk right. to us about the ungodly chain yeah uh, tuesday opens mm-hmm. and is building um from what uh, we have discussed on Monday and it tells us about the ungodly chain um and uh, in essence we know what a chain is it's a series of interconnected mm. uh, uh, metals uh, mm. that they loop and hold uh, hold on to each other but now it uh, the writer the author of the lesson uh, rather traces the beginning of this ungodly chain and the ungodly chain being uh, that the scripture speaks about uh, one of the final events that are being fought over the issues of of the end times were things that even began in the beginning mm-hmm. so he gives us the example of in in uh, perhaps if, if you could turn there in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 to 8 in which the world had only four people mm. and so amongst these four people all these people were, the ch- were children of god it is a fallen world it mm. is it is um it is um adam and eve and their two sons cain and abel and um god had given them uh after the fall god had given them the ordinance of of worship and of and and of and of uh, offering sacrifices which as we know were telling us were foretelling christ as the lamb of god mm. who will come and die and uh, carry the sins of the world mm. and so in this same ordinance the bible records um in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 4 and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel also brought the fastlings of his flock and the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain and his offering he had no respect the bible records and Cain was wroth and his countenance fell mm-hmm. it tells us the story of two men two types of people coming to worship one comes with vegetables the other comes with mm. with an animal yeah. sacrifice mm-hmm. hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 gives us the backdrop of worship and it says without the shedding of blood there it's can remission. be no remission of sin mm-hmm. and so it's a question of worship it began in the garden of eden as see, as soon as there was sin uh, god in, he instituted a systematic way of worship mm. an orderly way of worship even with a day of worship and a manner that he wants to worship and we see two brothers from the from the same household mm-hmm. to whom god would speak directly mm-hmm. you know it's not like to us today where you have to uh, filter through many preachers mm-hmm. through many voices mm-hmm. this these were people whom god would speak to uh, expressly mm-hmm. yet in all these we find abel did the right thing because he offered animal sacrifices mm-hmm. animal the sacrifices mm-hmm. last i checked vegetables don't bleed and christ is called <laughs> the lamb of god not mm. the vegetable of god <laughs> and so we see we see uh, god is very express expressive and god is very clear mm. to the extent even after cain has done the wrong thing mm. god once again comes down comes down like a parent looking uh, uh, sympathetically upon a wayward child and asks him the following in verse 6 and the lord said unto cain why art thou wroth mm. and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well shall thou not be accepted mm-hmm. if you worship in the proper way mm-hmm. if you do the right thing mm-hmm. as i have revealed it mm-hmm. to you 
then God says he will accept us. Mm -hmm. But we saw in the end, what did Cain do? Cain got so mad. Cain got so, got, so, got so jealous. Cain wanted to worship God the way he wanted. Mm -hmm. He wanted to mold God and to fit God into the mold that he had, he had, he had made for himself. Mm -hmm. but, we, but yet we know our God is a wonderful God. He's a large God. He cannot fit in any box that we, that we, we, we place him. And um, for us to be accepted to him, we must believe that he is. And we must uh, come to him in obedience and in faith. Amen. And so we Amen. see eventually Cain taking up his own hand, mm -hmm. by his own hand, taking the life of his brother. Mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. There were four people. He killed one of them. Mm -hmm. Some people say that was genocide. He killed a quarter of the world. <laughs> he killed a quarter of the world uh, back then. Mm -hmm. On the basis of what? Mm -hmm. Differences in worship. In worship. He began in the Garden of Eden. And uh, Revelation chapter 13 opens to us and uh, as, as, we, as it speaks to us about the seal of God and the mark of the beast, it tells us that these same persecutions in these last day events mm -hmm. will be indeed the end of that ungodly chain. Mm -hmm. The end of that ungodly chain. It tells us, uh, Christ writes and says in John chapter 16 and verse 2, that indeed a time will come when he was talking even to his disciples. And this, th this even happened to them, that wh whoever kills you will think that he is offering God service. Mm -hmm. That uh, religious zealots mm -hmm. who are worshipping God after their own consciences and after their own desires uh, would actually go out and persecute those who are actually worshipping in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. Mm -hmm. And so we see this ungodly chain has been perpetuated throughout the generation. Christ himself suffered at the mm -hmm. hands of religious leaders mm -hmm. who thought they were doing the work mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Yet they were in error because uh, they had not read uh, well and they did not really truly understand uh, what, what was happening. Mm -hmm. The same, um, another, another, another uh, um, verse that uh, is shared by the author is in the book of um, First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, and it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, mm -hmm. as though some strange thing happens and to, happened unto you. And it builds on from what Japheth had uh, shared with us on Monday about mm -hmm. Christ's suffering on the cross as our example. Mm -hmm. it's a, Peter continues and says that these sufferings are simply us, opportunities for us to be partakers together of in the sufferings of Christ. Mm -hmm. Partakers together in the sufferings of Christ. One preacher uh, puts it and says that everybody who goes to heaven will have a war story mm -hmm. because earth is a war zone. Everybody would have something that they went through, yeah. uh, an experience, mm -hmm. uh, a battle that they, that, 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 that they battled, mm -hmm. and all these things. Indeed, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22 speaks and says, And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Mm. The same shall be saved. Even as we close, the book of Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 15 and 17 speaks to us and says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. killed. Mm. It says worship. On the basis of worship, some will suffer. Some will lose their lives. And the Bible indeed says, And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Mm -hmm. It's telling us that uh, the ends of this ungodly chain are akin to its beginnings, and uh, it will be a time in which it is foretelling where the people of God will actually suffer. Some will die, will lose their lives. Mm -hmm. Others will lose their livelihoods and their ability to transact and to, mm -hmm. and, 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 and to, and to conduct business. Mm -hmm. And indeed, a prophecy tells us that the devil is preparing professed Christians by compromises in their lives to receive the mark of the beast when the final test comes upon us in the future. But indeed, God's love for each one of us will strengthen us and pres preserve us during the troublesome times ahead. As uh, the author of the lesson has been preparing us and telling us that indeed what we need to be cultivating in this time, mm -hmm. in this, uh, in this mm -hmm. time of peace, in this time when um, our trials are not that much, it's, it's sort of like we're in the gym before the final match. We are in the gym. <laughs> we, should, we need to be exercising mm -hmm. well, you know, mm -hmm. before eventually we go for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So these small, small trials, let us learn to trust God in them. Yes. Let us learn to trust mm -hmm. God in them. Mm -hmm. Trust God that he can provide rent for mm -hmm. you. 
-hmm. Trust God that he can provide for you uh, whatever it is that you're lacking. Learn to trust in him. And eventually when the time comes when you cannot sell or buy, when you are denied uh, your rights by others on the basis of your faith in God, then for a fact you will have peace and know that indeed your water and your bread will be sure. Amen. Amen. Scripture has assured us that God will take care of us. The hymn writer Amen. says, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God, God will, take will take care of you. Amen. In the midst of all these things that are happening, in the midst of all the calamities, God's people are secure and God's people indeed, um, as Christ himself ha feared the grave, mm. but lo and behold, on sun come Sunday morning, he arose a victor from the Amen. grave. And so Amen. let us uh, be encouraged and let us practice this faith, even the faith of Jesus. Amen. Two things come out clearly. The un ungodly chain will soon come to an end. Amen. And we need to trust God in these small trials that we are going through. That God will provide that rent that you are looking for. That God will provide healing. That God will provide the school fees you are looking for. Amen. The job that you do not have. In these hard economic times where everybody is just saying, things are hard, things are hard, God is going to provide. But we have to trust him. If you are going to trust him in this, we are, the, we are not invalidating your sufferings and by calling them small trials. <laughs> we are just saying that we are in the trial stage. The real thing is yet to come. So we need to trust God in the trial stage so that you can also trust him in the real Olympic. Those who follow the Lamb, just please take us through the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. You know, we've been speaking about the mark mm. of the beast, mm. the beast Mm. Uh, the image of the beast. Mm. We're just mentioning the beast, the beast. Mm -hmm. um, revelation, um, the, the Wednesday part introduces to us um, who that beast yes. is and described in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Mm. Um, verse 1 and 2 that says that we see a beast rising as, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the, the name of blasphemy mm. no, and and um, Raphael um, in the last um, uh, uh, discussion had defined for us what blasphemy is mm -hmm. you know the one who claims to forgive forgive sins mm -hmm, uh, and, mm -hmm. and without the authority of god the yes. one who calls himself the son of god or the representative of god when you are not that is blasphemy mm -hmm. and the beast which i saw was an uh, was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority revelation chapter 13 shows us a beast rising mm. and when this beast rises it has certain characteristics first mm. it's blasphemers mm. um, then it has characteristics which we uh, have not studied in depth but they are described in the book of uh, Daniel mm. characteristics of the land which we know is, is the Babylonian power mm. speaking as uh, having the mouth of land speaking with authority as Babylon spoke and said that all of you you need to all come b bow down to this image mm -hmm. the, speaking as, as as, as um, what, having the feet of a bear, having characteristics as we saw with the Persian Empire, you know, just like what Daniel went through. If you do not obey, um, um, if you if you continue in prayer, and and, and you, you will be thrown into a, a den of lions. Having the characteristics which um, direct the people to worship itself rather than worshiping God himself drawing away worship from God um, and and directing worship to the wrong power mm -hmm. and what is interesting in Revelation 13 is that this beast does not receive power from God it receives power from the dragon mm -hmm. and the dragon as identified in the book of Revelation 12 we went through this and Revelation 20 verse 2 mm -hmm. the dragon is Satan, Satan. so the beast yeah. receives power power from Satan. And the scary part of, um, of, of, of Revelation chapter 13 mm. is that in verse 3, we see people following and wandering after this beast. And they are excited. Mm. Honestly, today, if we presented Satan here and we told people, this is Satan, follow him, mm. maybe fewer people will do that mm -hmm. if they knew they were following mm. Satan. 
but the reason why people wonder after this beast, it is because this beast, being blasphemous, mm. considers itself to be Christ mm -hmm. or a representative of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yet it is an antichrist. It is against the principles and, and the laws of God himself. Mm -hmm. But it appears as Christ. It appears as a deliverer of the people. Mm -hmm. It appears to be, to, be, to be working for the people. And so everyone follows after this beast. And what is this beast essentially? The beast that bl blasphemes, the beast that rises after some other kingdoms ri rise. Mm -hmm. um, we see this beast without going into too much um, detail mm -hmm. again, just in summary, mm -hmm. this beast rising after the, the, the pagan um, after after pagan Rome rises, mm. the same power and entity that persecuted and killed Christ, which was the Roman Empire mm. at that time, led by emperors, we see a beast rising. And this time, it is not a, 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 a civil state mm -hmm. as the Roman Empire was. This is now a spiritual um, state having the, 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 the garb of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And we see Rome giving authority in his history actually it is almost the transition is almost non-existent mm. we just see the bishop of rome having the titles of the emperor of rome mm. coming in and being given spiritual power and spiritual authority after rome as a civil state had weakened itself we see them crowning their emperor to mm. become the bishop of rome mm. and having mm. spiritual authority mm. and yet even though it is a civil state giving it at the behind the scenes the bible reveals to us that it is satan giving it this authority mm -hmm. it is satan working through pagan rome to give people rome the authority to work and we see now um, the pope of rome rising up as a beast and the bible says the whole world will wander because why he will come as a benefactor of the race. Mm. He will come to seem as though he's going to save the people. And today we are seeing that happening. You know, the Pope, the Pope today being declared as a man of the people, mm. you know, he, he's, he's, he, he speaks um, wise words, very cunning, you know, with, he has craft, craft prospers in his hand today, mm. you know, calling people to his side and saying he's speaking about peace. I'm coming to just talk about climate change that we may all unite <laughs> together and it looks like these are good mm. things that benefit the whole mm. race today mm. and the whole world is wondering after him and getting excited about him but it is a gab Christ said that in the last days false Christ shall arise you know, mm. he, the word used there True. it is an antichrist will arise mm. will arise in the last day and we, we shall all follow after him mm. but he said when you shall hear they are there and there is another Christ over there what shall you do? Do not run over there. Mm -hmm. Whom do we follow? Revelation chapter 14 verse 4 tells us that there is another characteristic. Because the whole world is wandering after the beast. We are told that there are those people who are not defiled with women. And women here represent false churches. For they are virgins. These are they. What do they do? They follow, follow the, the lamb, lamb whithersoever he goes. goes. Amen. And while the world is following after the beast, I will assure you it is very difficult to follow the lamb. Mm. We want to follow glory. Pump. The numbers. The numbers. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. Mm -hmm. But a lamb, it is a lowly creature. Mm -hmm. A lamb has a sincere mm -hmm. faith. A lamb trusts in God. A lamb waits upon God. Mm -hmm. And during a time of crisis today, will you follow or wonder after the beast? Or will you follow the lamb? The lamb today calls you to honor and obey him. Obey my commandments. Trust in me during your trials. Have yeah. faith in me. Wait upon me. Amen. Follow the Amen. path that I'm guiding Amen. you. And those paths, by the way, the, today they may not be lined with gold. It is mm -mm. probably just green pasture that does not look as, as beautiful as the, as, the go, go, uh, as the path of gold that others are walking mm. upon. But wherever the lamb goeth, there our Lord leads us. Amen. And that is the characteristic of the people who will trust in their God with a simple faith. Amen. 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 No, the verse just continues to say they were purchased from among the human race Amen. and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouth. 
they are blameless. You know, you are just talking about this gab, and I'm remembering an example we were given some time back of how Jesus is to us. It's like a parent who comes with a whole box, how Jesus and Satan are to us. So one parent comes with a whole box of uh, very, very bad things, but covered in very nice covers, uh, gift covers, and he brings them like this, so you are able to see them. Then there is this other parent that is just him, on the face, but behind him are very wonderful real gifts. So one is compared to Saturn, like Saturn comes with these gifts, very nicely looking, covered, but when you open them, then you realize there's nothing here, there's nothing here, empty boxes perhaps. But with Jesus, once you have an, a relationship with him and get acquainted to him, then you one by one you get to see the gifts behind him. So dear viewer, are you following the gab or the lamb. And Jess has told us following the lamb will not be easy Amen. because who will be following something that is not colorful, that does not have pomp and everything else? True. Thank you so much, Jess, for taking us through that uh, wonderful study. So, uh, because time is moving and we would love to wrap up this study, we'll just go through the Thursday part, all of us, and starting with. Um, Raphael, Jesus, our only mediator, what do you have to say about the Thursday part? And, um, the Thursday part uh, uh, speaks to us, and uh, the author would like us to reflect on Revelation 13, verse 4 and 5, which I will read for us. And the Bible records and says, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And then, therefore, we ask ourselves, um, what are some of the, uh, how can we identify uh, this beast? We've been told it speaks about blasphemy. It, speak, it speaks about a power that many would follow, yet uh, it speaks blasphemies. The author also speaks to us, uh, as Jess has also alluded to our prior lesson, and told us, indeed in the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 18 to 26, the story of Christ, who, when Christ, uh, they brought a man who was unwell, and they brought him down unto him, and uh, eventually Christ speaks to him and say, tells him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Mm. In verse 21 of that, uh, of, of, of that text, the Bible records and says, and the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which Bless. speaketh blasphemies. blasphemies. Why? Mm. Who can forgive sins mm. but God, God. alone? Mm. Indeed, Christ, when he walked amongst men, was, um, was Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. And so he had every right to pardon and to, and to, and to, and to forgive sins. Yet, um, beyond Christ, after Christ, we find in this world a uh, religious uh, system mm -hmm. that purports uh, that they have the ability to call m members to confession yeah. and to even uh, to forgive sins. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, history even speaks about a time when men and women could buy pardons, mm -hmm. indulgences. called indulgences. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and these are some of the things that help us to identify this beast as that uh, Roman uh, papal uh, religious mm -hmm. system, which today is known as modern day Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, dear viewer, uh, we're not simply um, uh, looking to cast aspersions against a particular grouping of people, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. rather we invite you to investigate scripture and investigate history. And you will find that indeed the things that we say are truly. Uh, uh, but biblically based and uh, have no malice, have a foundation in the Bible. And, and it is God who is calling us and, and speaking to us. Indeed, we find a system that has removed Christ as the mediator mm -hmm. and placed man in the place of God. Mm -hmm. We find uh, a man saying that uh, they hold uh, the, the very place of Christ here on earth, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of the marks of their authority, they say, is what? The ability to change the mm. Sabbath from, from Saturday, Saturday to, to the first day of the week, mm. which is Sunday. Mm. And so um, these are some of the things that uh, the Thursday aspect is trying to speak to us about. It's, it's trying to create that contrast mm. between this power of Revelation chapter 13 and mm. how it tries to usurp the authority of Christ and, and to replace 
uh, the things of God with the things of mankind. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, even as I give my, my fellow panelists an opportunity to chip in, we look at uh, John chapter 10 and verse 33, even as we're looking at what blasphemy is, and then it says, and the Jews answered him on a different occasion, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, Make makest yourself. thyself God. Mm -hmm. Biblical yourself God. blasphemy in the Bible is defined by when a man, when a creature, when anything that is in the realm of those who, who God said, let us make, mm -hmm. tries and takes upon itself the attributes of the divine, then that is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. When you say you have, you hold the place of God and you are verily God and you can change the laws of God, mm -hmm. that is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. When you say that you can, you have the power to forgive sin, you have the power to give a prescription that will forgive sin, like say ten Hail, Hail Marys and mm -hmm. go around a field or a church mm -hmm. or do this and that uh, in order to, to forgive sin, mm -hmm. then uh, indeed uh, that is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of the gospel story is that Yes, men and women are fallen. Men and women do commit sin. But we have in Christ the one and only true mediator. Mm. And the price that we have to pay for forgiveness, he himself has paid. Amen. He has already shed the blood. Mm. He has already shed his blood. And so ours is simply to take upon ourselves the attributes of, 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 of his blood as the lamb and uh, his leadership as the shepherd also. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, we are, dear viewer, like uh, Raphael has said, we are not casting stones and saying that, you know, this church is on the wrong. We are just simply asking you to investigate the scriptures, read the scriptures for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to just guide you. The title of our lesson is The Seal of God and Mark of the Beast. And we are on the Thursday part just talking about our thoughts. Our only, Jesus, our only mediator, uh, Jess and Japheth, whoever goes first. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, so for me, uh, I think... Um, Sometimes when we're going into prophecy, we think that there is no Jesus yeah. in prophecy. We think mm. it's just dates and times. Mm. But here, we are finding somebody who is the, an altar Christos, mm. another Christ, an mm. antichrist. Mm. Somebody who has taken upon himself the place of, of Christ. Christ. Now, who is mm. Christ, first of all? Mm. Christ is, is, is our sustainer. Mm. He is our redeemer. Mm. He is the giver of life. Of life. He is our mm -hmm. strengthener. Mm. So imagine if somebody would take the place of this person. It's like if somebody would take the place of water, mm. you know, instead of water, someone is being given something that is not water, something that is unhealthy, mm. something that will destroy you, yes, but maybe it has yes. the appearance mm. of water. How mm. dangerous is that thing? Mm. And so it is wonderful for us that God has seen fit to, uh, to identify for us in very clear and unmistakable terms mm. who this power is that is the final enemy of God. Mm. The one whom in Second Thessalonians we are told Jesus Christ shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Mm. It is not that... Um, uh, uh, God hates people. Mm -mm. God loves people. That is why he reveals mm. who the enemy of God's people are in the last days. It, it is uh, a, 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 a strange and unfortunate thing that there even exists such a thing as a confessional, mm. as a place that God's people can go to a human being and try and confess their faults. You know, sometimes you can try and twist scripture and say, mm. the Bible says that confess faults one to another. another. But I, you know, like <laughs> I'm pretty sure that normally those confessions go one way. Mm. So it is clear that uh, a, 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 that is not an application of that particular mm. text. Mm. And normally a response to confessions of very personal things mm. are the words ego te absolvo. Mm. I absolve you. you. Mm. What is that? Is that not blasphemous? Mm -hmm. Is that not a human being mm -hmm. taking upon himself the power of God, mm. the power to forgive sins. Mm. So it's it's so again it is it it's it, 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 it's it's that imagine if you went to a place uh, 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 what we find in the book of Jeremiah, when, when, when God tells to the Israelites, he tells them, you have committed two sins. Mm. You have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, mm -hmm. and you have hewn for yourselves cisterns that can hold no water. That is what has happened. Mm. The Antichrist has taken the place of Christ, mm. uh, uh, where Christ was meant to be the one who was our, our sustainer, our, 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 our provider. And in his stead, now he is the one who is forgiving sins. But that is not, that's no forgiveness. Mm -mm. That is no forgiveness, mm -mm. you know. Um, um, it's like imagine if me I decided to say that I can I am I am the bank that you have um, uh, taken some loans then I cancel the debt I have no such power mm -mm. in fact it's it's even worse because number one you still have that debt mm -hmm. and number two 
you are deceived into thinking mm. that you are you are you are you, 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 you so almost, you've lost money it, and you're still having a debt imagine mm. how how dangerous that mm. is yeah so that is the fault mm. that and 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 that's actually the apex of part one part one is to help us identify who the beast power is mm. yeah thank you jess you know um i think it's just interesting to see um what a human being can do to have so much power mm-hmm. and put so much power mm-hmm. but again we've seen that the authority is not given by them but by um, Satan himself in the book of John chapter 10 Christ speaking i believe of similar things that would happen in verse 1 he says verily verily i say unto you he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same is a thief and a robber but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep when he told the disciples this parable they didn't understand him verse 6 tells us they didn't understand him and so in verse 7 he starts interpreting it for them it says verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep mm-hmm. all that ever come before me are thieves and robbers so if there is anyone entering in by another way and not through Christ all those people who stand through that or enter in another way they are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them verse 9 he says i am the door but by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture verse 10 he says the thief this person who came in and it was not Christ the thief mm-hmm. cometh not mm-hmm. but for to steal and to kill yeah. and to destroy, destroy. Mm-hmm. i am come that they might have life and that mm-hmm. they might have it more abundantly mm-hmm. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 tells us that there is only one mediator between God and man and that is Christ Jesus himself. And here Christ himself speaks and says, I am that door that leads you to to God. I am that door. I am that door for the sheep. If any man enters enters through any other way into that highway to heaven then that person is a thief and a robber and 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 we are told that the main role of that person is to steal to kill and to destroy and therefore even beyond going to a priest for confession even just saying mary revealed to us your son christ jesus mary is not a mediator between you and god only christ is entering through any other door you are you mm-hmm. you are a thief and a robber and that person is also stealing from you you are right and your authority to freely approach the throne of god we are told come boldly boldly not come shaken through mary not mm-hmm. come shaken through a saint mm-hmm. not come through a priest mm-hmm. come boldly to the throne of christ Amen. not through any other Amen. way and 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 that is the way to salvation mm-hmm. not through man mm-hmm. and it can never be through man mm-hmm. otherwise it might look like the 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 pope or the priest is working for a benefit but we are told that they are actually working to kill you and to destroy mm. you because they make you lose an opportunity to have your own personal relationship mm. with Christ himself who is the only door and the only way to heaven Amen. and not Amen. through man. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, this has been a really wonderful study and just something is coming to my mind like um you know if someone is always standing between you and Christ you do not get to have a relationship with mm-hmm. Christ mm-hmm. so meaning that you do not have the faith of Jesus this person has really destroyed you you know you do not get to have the faith of Jesus so when the trials come it is so easy for you to accept the mark of the beast because you do not know Christ you have not had the opportunity of approaching the throne boldly and just going to the father by yourself dear viewer um i don't know how this study has been for you if you have questions if you have comments we really appreciate them just type them on a, on the comments box and thank you so much for joining us and i'm asking that god will help you just that actually not really help you i'm praying that god will disturb your spirit until you just sit down and really want to understand what is this that you are studying because this study is really really important for this time 
at such a time as this and for our salvation. Because so many things are happening. People are talking about climate change and just the world coming together. And you are seeing that as a very good thing. Yes, it is. But there is consequence to that. There is consequence to that. And... I just want to thank you, my panelists, thank for so this wonderful study that you've had. This journey of 11 lessons, <laughs> it's not been easy, but the Lord has been faithful. Amen. And I'll ask that, Raphael, please close for us with a word of prayer. Let's believe and pray. Our kind and loving Father and Master, what in heaven, we humbly come before you this blessed day. We are thankful, O Lord, for the wonderful gift of the Sabbath that you've given to all us, dear Lord, and above all else for the gift of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, through whose blood we can come boldly to thy throne of grace, dear Lord. And so, this Sabbath day we come, having declared and shared together from your word, our prayer and our desires that the dear viewer may be blessed and that he, may be, he or she may be encouraged, dear Lord, to draw nearer and nearer to you, to be set free from the bonds of uh, uh, the religious uh, views and uh, uh, schemes of the, uh, of, of the devil and uh, the things that men have, uh, have come up with, and rather view Christ as the only mediator, the only son of God, the only way through which, dear Lord, we are made uh, at oneness uh, with heaven. And so, through Christ, we pray for the viewer, and we pray for ourselves also, dear Lord, that ultimately, when that day comes, dear Lord, may we be found with the faith of Jesus and the faith in Jesus, our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.